Lost Soul, a Confederate soldier in New England by Glass Ralston. Prologue. The Kawasaki four-wheeler whipped through knee-high Mississippi grass. Seated behind our guide, Vital Davis, I dangle from the edge of the seat like a reluctant rodeo cowboy. As we scaled fallen trees and other obstacles, it became evident that if we were to reach our destination, it would only be by such a mode of travel. Overgrown, barely passable paths yielded little evidence of a thriving plantation from 150 years past. Each avenue dead-ended in thicket. Bio found it hard to conceal his growing doubts about finding a little cemetery somewhere in the surrounding wilderness. He had stumbled upon the ruins ten years earlier while hunting in these same woods, never expecting to take bitters there. But he had traveled more than a thousand miles, hoping to find a brick walled burial ground on the remnants of a plantation known as Mount Independence. A fury of more than two miles into the woods and thus far yielded nothing. One noteworthy than a terrified armadillo. Without a word, Vital suddenly cut the ATV's engine, dismounted, and began walking uncertainly into a particularly dense portion of forest. I followed a few paces behind, about thirty yards ahead, the shape of a modest headstone emerged through the shadows and light. There is, I cried to my wife, who had remained with the vehicle. Vital smiled with relief as I impressed pat of him on the back. Mount Independent Cemetery was devastated. Ravaged by time, nature, and careless flocking, every stone was toppled or broken. The remains of brick walls laid in heaps. Nevertheless, I was thrilled. I had found it on the key piece of a Civil War soldier's life story. The stone tablet that was the object of our search lay broken in five sections. Gently repositioning the stone and coating it with a light layer of dirt, I deciphered this inscription. This monument was erected by W. D. Postlewaite to the memory of his beloved wife Susan, who departed this life on the 10th of September, A.D. 1835, aged 21 years, 4 months, and 4 days. The loneliest in this world of sadness are destined to decay. The first and those whose fate seems woven of gladness are mournful victims of the worst. Though she like roses, rudely torn and graceful fragrance from their stem, Bloomed like her emblems of a morn, and crushed and withered like them. The young wife of William Dunbar Postlewaite had died six days after giving birth to her second child, Susan. Little Susan's life was to span the gold rush in the West, a Civil War reconstruction, and the advent of the automobile. Long after the days of King Cotton and the grandeur of plantation life had become distant memories. Susan would live her last days alone at the plantation her father had built for her. Mother, she was a true steel magnolia. The elder Susan hadn't lived to spend a single day at Westmoreland Plantation, but William would remarry and raise seven more children with his second wife, Sophia Carter, on its 1,800 acres. Only Dora Susan refused him to leave would reside on Westmoreland's remnants at the dawn of the 20th century. By that time, Westmoreland's scale had been diminished by the scale of, sale of much of its acreage by sharecropping, which continued at what is now known as Westmoreland Farms as late as the 1970s. Susan came into a sole possession of Westmoreland upon a death of her only Full sibling, a brother named Samuel, two years her senior. Susan's brother died at 43 years of age in the unluckiest of places for a plantation owner. A thousand miles away in the quiet village of River Point in the industrialized seafaring state of Rhode Island, Samuel Pathway's grave had been marked by a simple stone bearing inscription, SP. The tiny monument did not survive the years. By 1995, 12 decades after Sam Passaway's death, 100 people would convene at the mansion of Brown Civil War Governor to honor him. A nearly forgotten soldier, a lost soul, sadly symbolic of so many soldiers whose deeds and sacrifices have been forgotten, was finally to have his dignity restored. It's a mock grave. This is Sam's story, and the story of the scores of people who put aside differences 
and came together as Americans to rally on his behalf. The war Confederate soldiers, he served during the Civil War as a private in Company D, 21st Mississippi Infantry. He is subject of Les Rawlson's book, Lost Soul, the Confederate Soldier in New England. This marker on his grave was placed on Veterans Day in 1994.